Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and it's the best day of the week. It's CHB Day, Competitive Historic Brawl. For the first time ever, I put a poll on Patreon letting my patrons vote for the commander that they wanted to see on Competitive Historic Brawl Friday. And you frickin' animals, what, what do you know? What do you think they did? Uh, CGB, I think they picked Shauna because that's the intro that you're recording. <laughs> Yeah, you'd like to think that, wouldn't you? They tied. We had five options, and my 298 patrons tied. They voted equally for Shauna and Sheldred, Bant and Mono Black. So what were we to do? How do we handle a situation? How do we handle a tie? Do we have a runoff vote? Do we let Twitch chat decide? I'm just gonna do two. I'm going to release one today and one tomorrow. Yes, it is now a competitive historic brawl weekend. You get two videos tomorrow. You shall have a build for Sheldred. But today is all about Shauna purifying Blade, a Bant commander with lifelink, a 3-3. You saw it in the Joda video yesterday. It's a human warrior. And at the beginning of your end step, you may pay X if you do draw X cards. X can't be greater than the amount of life you gain this turn, and she herself has lifelink. One thing I learned really quickly trying to build a good Shauna deck for competitive Historic Brawl, one that wins, is that there are a lot of ways to build Shauna and there are a lot of traps. A few different things I tried. Shauna Life Gain. It's really easy to grab Soul Warden and all of the Ajani Pride Mate type cards and cards like Speaker of the Heavens and all the things that trigger off a lot of life gain and build life gain tribal. That deck is pretty fun, especially for a life gain deck because it draws cards, which is usually my complaint about those decks. However, it still folds to a couple of board wipes, and that was something that even running some counter spells and things like Heroic Intervention did not fix. It also got to run a sweet combo with Scurry Oak and Heliod, and it was very different from the Paradox Engine combos I usually run, so that was a reason I wanted to show you that. But at the end of the day, that version of the deck was not as good. The other version I ran, of course, was a Paradox Engine combo deck, and many of you will probably be happy to see that we're playing something different today. But I do have to tell you, the Paradox Engine combo deck is pretty good. The only real difference between this deck and Paradox Engine combo is that that deck runs Tome of the Infinite, Trophy Mage, about five artifact mana rocks, about five more two mana artifacts, artifact mana rocks, and then all the four mana artifact mana rocks, and then it runs Paradox Engine. Basically using Paradox Engine not as the point of the deck, but as a mana engine. Because that brings me to part number three and what we're going to talk about with this build. The biggest trap in Shauna is not respecting how mana hungry she is. Shauna is an excellent commander if you have a lot of mana. You need mana to cast her because she dies very easily. You need mana to pump into her ability when you finally do gain some life with her on board and they're on the end step so that you can draw those cards. You need a lot of mana because you also need to keep interacting with your opponent's board because the best thing you can do is clear the way for Shauna Purifying Blade to attack the opponent. So what this deck does is it tries to keep the opponent under control enough so that Shauna eventually survives on board and can get in a few attacks and then you start drawing cards every turn, a lot of extra cards, and you run away with the game. So it's a very control-based Shauna deck. If you would like a card-by-card -card review as well of all the cards in the deck and why they are in the deck, and you would also like to hear about a few cards that are not in the deck, we recorded all that live on a Twitch VOD, and you can access that Twitch VOD here on YouTube by being a member. You can hit the join button, or you can go over to Twitch and subscribe there for access to the VODs there. And you can hear a card-by-card -card review. However, those become very long intros, and I don't want to make the longest intro ever when a lot of people People skip the intro anyway, and because it's, yeah, it's a lot. So if you want a card by card review, you can check out those VODs where we also play a lot more games. You get to see some of the losses and some of the crazier moments that didn't make it into the video. So that can be fun for those of you who are true historic Brawl Shauna enthusiasts. In this instance, take my word for it, this version of the deck is a really cool version of the deck and it plays a type of style that I love to play and I think a lot of you will enjoy. A card that is definitely notable that we're going to review. It came out today. So some new alchemy cards released. Yay, alchemy. Yay, everybody's favorite. Yay, I hear nothing but yay for alchemy. Leave a yay for alchemy in the chat. But this is... Here's the thing. I, I thought... 
I thought I loved alchemy, then I thought I hated alchemy, and I'm not here to tell you that I love alchemy. I don't love alchemy, but I also don't hate it. I hate certain cards and things that they do with alchemy. There are cards in alchemy that are very cool, and I think this is specifically a use of alchemy that is cool. It gets sweet cards into the historic brawl format and makes for some really awesome moments. So I don't hate alchemy. I hate a lot of the cards they've made, especially specialized. I hate that they reused art on different cards that are the, like, they look exactly like paper. Anyway, there's a whole video about what I hate about alchemy. You can look it up. Um, but there are things I like. Like, I like this card. And this is Oracle of the Alpha. It is a mythic wild card. Rip. But, I mean, it's a flying 2-3 bird wizard. And when it enters the battlefield, you conjure the power 9 into your library, then shuffle. And when this attacks, you scry one. What the heck is the power 9? If you haven't heard of the power 9, if you're not a magic boomer, Ancestral Recall, Time Walk, Two mana for an extra turn, seems fine. Time Twister, awesome card. Commander favorite, one of the most popular cards still around. Black Lotus, widely considered the most powerful card ever and the most expensive card in history. Moxes, all the Moxes. And then we get back to Ancestral Recall, which is my personal favorite card of all time. One mana, instant target player draws three cards. Oracle of the Alpha. It's going to be a lot of my blue decks, I think. And it's especially good in a blue deck that sees a lot of cards and plays a longer game like this one. All right. Today's shout out for our competitive historic brawl video goes to Curly on Patreon. Thank you very much for signing up at a tier that gets you a shout out. We'll also be, we'll probably do more polls, uh, letting you guys vote for what commanders you want to see. And uh, you can check out the link in the description, patreon.com slash covert go blue curly you're very cool now let's dive in let the competitive historic brawl shana nonsense begin all right our opponent is playing joda the unifier and we have a hand that doesn't quite have all of our colors it has all our colors but not in a mana way that would actually cast the shana and the dromoka's command is a lot worse if you can't cast shana that's for sure i think this one's a mulligan now we have our colors in such a way that Shauna can be cast, but we don't have blue mana for a long time, and we don't have any plays before turn three, and we're on the draw. That is not good, but we do have key into farewell, which, as long as we don't let them ramp, if we can somehow counter a ramp spell, maybe it's going to be fine. They open on tower. Joda, there's a million ways to build it. Most people try to play it like basically like a Kenrith deck with a lot of good stuff and a lot of ramp spells. Could have made decisive denial available there, but I don't think there's going to be something I'd rather deny than Swan. I can't do either right now. They didn't do anything. I think we're fine. Like couldn't counter that anyway. So, this is a draw two. If Joda comes down, we're still quite a ways from farewell, but I think I just hold mana open and I try to keep them from casting Joda from fear. Our weapon is pure fear. Um, they don't have red or black. Oh no, they do have black here. Okay, they could cast Joda there. All right, we tank for a minute. Let them think we're thinking about countering this. a little tank just a little tanky tank all right we draw two now is the opponent thinking about countering this they could have counter spells and oh, we drew a good counter spell so i guess we're not going to key this turn you want to stifle that <laughs> Almost feels like they're thinking about it. Discard a card. What a scam. All these cards are so sweet. Is it Swan Song? It might be Swan Song. The thing
thing is, I kind of want to play key and keep the swan song open to resolve it. And then I play the farewell. I think it's you. Weird. Very weird. I think letting go of Sublime Epiphany, because I don't see where exactly it matches up. All right. Do they have a counter for the counter? No, they don't. You're going to have to try that next turn, opponent. We are not so easily joded here. Here's my key. Ooh, did they sandbag a counter? They like could have resolved their Jota, but chose to hold up a counter for me. Let's find out. <laughs> Dude, it's the archive. There's so much cool stuff in there. You know you want to stop it. game on. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what a spread. What a delicious spread. This shows you how much I love this card. That's how much I love Counterspell. <laughs> An extra turn doesn't get us that far ahead. Approach of the second sun. I mean, yes, it wins, but so does our end game. The immortal sun. Sure. A fine play. My planeswalkers are ineffective. They're holding up the mana with Ornithopter. I mean, am I crazy for wanting to wait for Joda? I kind of want to wait for Joda, but I guess I have March for Joda. But if I name Artifact, I'm losing my key, which is kind of heartbreaking. It is what it is. All creatures, all artifacts. This is a really good time for a Swan Song. Oh, it, yeah, if they had a counter there and we hit it with the Swan Song then the the bird would get exiled would be nice all right they have a tap land so no joda oh. <laughs> nice oh man if we play this here though we don't have enough blue to hold up a counter spell we're relying on decisive denial and swan song to get the job done but this does feel like the turn where we're supposed to progress our plan. Behold, my trigger for zero. Raph? Sure. Not afraid of Raph. Now they can try to flash in Joda on my turn? I really hope they do. <laughs> They are. They are trying. Oh, that's great. Um, all right. Go ahead. Flashing Joda. Good play. Right into my clutches. Shauna's first hit. No card draw. We had to spend the mana. Now let's see what their reply is. What do they have? Does it get them back into it? It's a strong card. That card is strong. No creatures in the bat in the graveyard, though, for Kenny yet. That is a good draw. Get out. You're in my way. Oh, come on. We're not. No. Nope. 
Oh man, if we use the counter spell here, then Joda does resolve next turn. And it's tapped, so I get a hit here. I think we let this resolve. Hello, Gear Hulk. It's kind of funny. Actually, do we use that? Yeah, we do, we do. I, I was thinking maybe we're supposed to save it. Because we are a little bottlenecked on blue. Didn't matter, made head explode. Didn't even have to use both counter spells. Econ 90, Tyvar Kel, Elf Tribal. I think we'll keep the hand with Supreme Verdict and the ramp spell against Elf Tribal. Makes sense to me. Honk honk. Mmm, classic Lanoir elf skin from the very, very early days of Arena. We're dealing with a serious gamer. We could run out Shauna. We could also run out Uro. We could also just play it next turn and have some food tokens sitting around. The thing is, I think I'm just going to blow up this goose, but having the food tokens around with Shauna is really good. So I think I'm patient. I think next turn is Uro. Turn, the next turn is Verdict. The next turn is Shauna is very good. All right. No countering the elves. Got it. Honk honk. Uro, Uro. We'll take the two. We can seek knowledge this turn if we wish, and we probably do. Yes, deploy your elves. Send them all into the verdict. Do we block? If we're going to if we're going to sack this anyway, yeah, we block. And now the opponent knows the nature of their fate. For who would block with a goose if the world were not about to burn? Yay for drawing land. Very cool. Here's Tyvar. <laughs> Oh, yeah, baby, I'm ready. Don't believe it. This is the classic control treatment for sure. All your cool elves are dead. Marwen. All right, guys, is it Shauna time? Because we could Gear Hulk, and Gear Hulk seems very powerful. But Shauna is pretty good too, and if they kill Shauna or do anything about Shauna, we can get Shauna back. Which is very good. Ah. Also now denials in the graveyard, which means Gear Hulk can fight. Mmm, this blows up enchantments and artifacts, right? I think that's how that works. Yeah, specialize and do something. Each opponent loses three life. Nasty. Hexproof from artifacts. How does that work? So if I decide to denial, target creature you control fights target creature you don't control, do they fight or not? Because it's the instant that's doing the fighting, right? I'm so confused. Do they fight or don't they? I guess it's the creature doing the damage 
the instant is creating it, so the fight will happen, but the creature is doing the damage. No, it's not protection, though. Like, protection would say you don't take the damage. Hexproof? That's not how that works, right? Oh, I don't know. For science! I mean, I don't know, man. Anything could happen. Get wrecked. Never didn't have it. Uh, let's decline. Kind of obvious what we have, but they might be running out of things. All right, they do play black mana. And they have a Blood Chief's Thirst on top of the library. Well, now that card's gone from the graveyard, so we can't Uro. But they might trade. If they trade the Oracle here, are we happy? I guess we are. So they won't. Go blue. Oh man, Shauna activations. Feels so good. Just ancestral recall on our little creature, on our commander. Wow, that's big. <laughs> Okay, that's not an elf. Holy crap. It's also not nearly as good without the ability. I, I, I wish they didn't still have a 7-7, but we do what we can. Not the matchup for you. This is not your world. However, it is an Uro world. Kind of want to save the fountain for next turn when we don't have an Uro trigger to use. I'll have another three cards, please. Dealer. Oh my gosh, that feels so good. It's so good. They pass turn. They have a ley line of abundance on top. They have a thirst in hand that they didn't go for, and they have collected company. Well, they might resolve this collected company, but you know they don't want to cast it with the Titan on top. And if they cast it now, then we know what they hit. Okay, they chose to put the Titan on the bottom. I'd love to see that. Well, now we can swan song that sucker. Let's just hold this back. Draw all these cards. No risk. The opponent might have realized by now that they should have traded. <gasps> okay, don't concede, opponent. Don't concede. We have to let them... Guys, I should counter this collected company. We have to let them do it. Because we really want... We want to make it to next turn. Really bad. Yep, resolves. Weird. <laughs> I'm just flooded. I got nothing. Oh, crap. Never got my two life. So sad. Lanoir Abomination. 10, 10, Vigilance, Menace. The number of elves you control plus the number of elves in your graveyard. Oh my! Our opponent's got a beefy critter. Aishana? No. No, 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 no. Nope, you put that back. That's my girl. You can't, you can't touch that. Like I said, we have to let, we have to keep them in the game just long enough for us to do some Power 9 stuff. Oh yeah, Oracle of the Alpha is here. Now the Power Nine has been shuffled into our library and I'm gonna play Search for Iskanta. We're not searching for Iskanta no more. We're searching for the Power Freaking Nine. 
Any artifacts down there? Nope, not yet. All right. Uh, did we gain any life? We did not. Sack this. All right, they level up their druid. Again, we could kill it. We need to keep them in this game. We really need to keep them in this game if we want to see the power nine. This is this is the art of historic brawl that people just don't understand. Only only elite gamers like myself have solved it. You just have to keep them hanging around. <laughs> then you get to do your cool thing. People complaining about scoops in historic brawl, they never learned how to just let them hang around. Like this, this is fine. This is fine. I mean, I'm not even going to put it in the command zone. I'm going to use it to flip the Ascanta, and then I'm going to exile it later with the Uro. Oh, don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. But we can't be doing that. Don't leave. I let them do so much! They could have just cast it again next turn. Come on! I guess I still have to get better. We go up against one of the most hated, the most vile, Tergrid, God of Fright. They will try to make us discard and sacrifice everything, and then they will take control of it. It's gross. It's hideous. It's horrible. It should be banned. It's, it's just the kind of evil that we're looking for. So it doesn't really matter what's in our opening hand, as long as we have three or more lands of appropriate colors, because the opponent is going to make us discard all of these. Wow, it is Witch's Oven. It is turn two. I still have cards in my hand. It's a miracle. Caverns. They must be pretty low on land in their hand then. That's a creature. And in combination with Witch's Oven, they can make so much food. Let's seek some new knowledge. This old knowledge is lame. Oh yeah. I'm a little worried about them taking it with the Terra Grid though. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. See, next turn they can cast Terra Grid. So I can't cast this next turn unless I'm also willing to Verdict. I am willing to Verdict. I've decided I'm willing to Verdict. I'm gonna put Explore back. RNG fans get pumped. We are shuffling the power nine into our freaking library. We could draw a time twister at any moment. They're in there. You can tell because our deck size is 97. They're in there. Opponent might scoop out of terror. Braids. Braids of Injadar? That's busted. That, yeah, we're gonna have to blow this stuff up. What a sweet combination of cards. They didn't, they were supposed to food. Why, why they no food? Uh, I'll sack this. Now you didn't get a card. Uh, they haven't played Terragrid, so let's get the Fable Passage out of our system. Pro tip, don't crack Fable Passage when the opponent has Terragrid on the field. Also, no, just, just casually examining the library. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Ooh, ooh. Ah, <laughs> it's, it's just nice to know they're there, you know? It, 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 I, ah, yes. <laughs> Very nice. Go on, go on. Oh, yeah. Mm, okay. All right, all right. I, I almost hit decline. I was so happy. Boom. All 
All right, play Terror Grid for me. Let's go. Just don't thought seize after you do it. I might cry. Liliana? Interesting. Address me as queen of the dead. All right, queen. You get a planes. They get a flesh bag. Now we're down to almost nothing. You got a planeswalker? So do I. We do that this turn because we can wash away the tear grid. Next turn we can tuck the Liliana. Maybe we have to save the tuck for the tear grid actually. This is kind of risky. Minus seven, you get an emblem, put target creature from a graveyard. How scared are we of that emblem? I think we'll find a way to attack Liliana. Liliana can minus, minus X where X is the number of creatures in your yard. It is three. So maybe they minus. The problem is they replay Terra Grid. What do we do about it? I think we have to trust ourselves to solve our Terra Grid problem. We have to trust ourselves to be able to solve this. We gotta find a way. Don't cycle that with Terra Grid on the field unless you want to lose it. All right, scary times, guys. Very scary. Okay. Oh, it was close. Let's skip to the good part. Ooh, okay. Now this is a fun bit. Not everybody knows this Shauna trick. You just run her into combat. It's a chump attack. The opponent's not blocking. If they did block, you just recast her and you still get the trigger. End step, put a stop, because we want to float some mana, and then use it with Shauna, and then also because we might draw a removal spell that we want to play on Terra Grid. Broker's Charm doesn't do it. Uh, okay, um, pass. I guess we can still try to draw with it, but it looks like Teferi's going to die. That is a card you can draw off the top of your library. Holy crap. Congrats on your new bird. Didn't know you were a bird person, but there it is. All right, two cards. Freaking five toughness, man. So hard to kill. Um, I don't know if we're supposed to cast this when our opponent has no cards in hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little sus. <laughs> I mean, I am excited as anyone would be to draw their, a time twister on Magic Arena. But I am not convinced that the right play is to time twister. <laughs> and let the opponent draw seven. <laughs> when we're this far ahead? I mean, that's just mania. They're taking it. We're drawing another three. They are so afraid of Shauna. Let's thin the deck. I would have preferred to draw a time walk. Give ourselves a good shot at a time walk here. <laughs> oh, 
All right, guys, if we discard permanents, our opponent will get them. Just something to think about. So we have to discard spells. Make disappear isn't looking particularly useful. And wow, what a great use for a power nine card this is. <laughs> I will not be forgiven anytime soon for that. First time I drew one of the power nine cards, I discarded it to hand size. Feels good, man. Feels good. Wind Grace. Ooh, we have the Oracle in our opener and we're up against Wind Grace. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. And we go first. Yep, it's a keeper. So we'll have green into white. So we won't Essence Scatter on two, but that's okay. Ooh, Mana Dork. All right, off to the races. I wish I did have blue on turn two for the Seek Knowledge for sure. A little unfortunate. All right. Well, their deck is on the frickin' move. So we chill. They have ramped on ramp. Very dangerous. They don't have any lands in Graveyard, but we do, which is we need to get that exiled to our Uro as fast as possible. Corvold? Really? Okay. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, good, good top deck. We take those. We take those. The Goose. Nothing? Coward. Maybe you're going to use Memorial to get back Corvold. That's fine, too. Dramoka's command can go. We are not having much of a Shauna game. There isn't a lot for it to fight. Oh no, not the upkeep trigger. Anything but the upkeep. Lego my ego. More blue? Go for it, go blue. Yep. <laughs> did they forget that they can use my graveyard? I think they did. I think that's what we're seeing here. I think they forgot they can use my graveyard because they could have just played their commander on that turn and got my hideout. But people don't always remember to look in your graveyard. Go away, leave and never come back. Okay, not putting it in the library. Maze Mind Tome. They're having a couple mana problems here. Our opponent also only has four, but they have a whole bunch of rampers. Oh, come on, dude. I was using that. Oh my god. I... When the deck becomes committed to a card, you will draw that card. End of story. Hey, you're a land. We like those. Uro. Uro. The frickin' Notvold Slumber Mound, dude. We're gonna die. 
Oh my gosh, what's it take to get land up in here? I only run 40 plus MDFCs. So it's like 41 or 42. Plus cultivate and into the north. And you know, it's like 60, 60 cards in my deck. They're not using this. Oh my God. I mean, we're trying. We're trying. We need to ferry. We draw land. Okay. We don't draw land. But the ferry is on the board. They use their Terra Sunder on my Maze Mind Tome, so. Maelstrom Pulse. Cool. Uh, do we give them a bird? I think we. I think we try. The ferry too important. We'll see if they have another way to kill it. Deck has a lot of ways to kill it. Yeah, if it's anything like the way I built Wind Grace, and so far they're all cards that were in my version, there's a lot of ways to kill Planeswalkers. Oh, looks like we get to keep Teferi. That's a. Teferi's kind of a one card combo win con. It just combos with itself. Most people can't take a Teferi uptick for very long. Hello. Wow. So we could rebuke them. We could also save it till something bigger is on the battlefield. I think we're just... We just want to discover this formula, I think. Oh no. <laughs> Cannot land. All right. Untappers. Here's food. Heh, <laughs> you take one damage for that food, lol. Alright, Teferi takes one on the nose. But is still here. And that's the important thing. No! The, not the slumber mound! Okay. In response, I'll discover a formula. That's pretty good. Untap. Plus, come on, land. I don't absolutely need it, but there we go. All right. Um, rebuke you. Pick him up. I'm pretty sure we got this now. To fairy one card win con baby. Hey, we can get back our maze mind tome, guys. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. Finally, Karn has a purpose. All right, let's kick it. Throw Spiral, but with Scry 2. We can't put this on the battlefield. Oh, this card is so good here, though. Nah, we don't need it. Let's try to hit Let's try to hit the land. If we're hitting land, we're going to be fine. It's pretty hard to do, apparently, but... If we're hitting land, we're going to be fine. Okay. Karn! turns off your food and your signet. I'm going to mortar your food token. How do you like them apples? Dude, let's... We could play Uro. Let's get the power freaking nine in our deck. And then we're gonna use this Kanta to find them. It didn't get to happen last time, but maybe this opponent 
is made of tougher stuff. Yep, Power Nine's in the deck. That's hype. They're in there. So far, we've done amazing things with the Power Nine in our deck, like discard a Time Twister to hand size. That's the thing that we did. That's, that's the only thing we've done <laughs> with the Power Nine. <laughs> Ooh, nope, nope. Next turn, maybe, but not, not this turn. Nope, 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 nope. Transform. Hook me up with that Maze Mind Tome from Exile. That's how we do it. We need to move quickly. I'm trying to play quickly. I don't want them to leave. <laughs> I really, really, really don't want them to leave. Uh, I would take the farewell, but if I show them the farewell, they'll probably scoop. <laughs> so we don't. All right, green, blue, spiral, draw, land, north. All right, playing fast. Otherwise, I'd sit here admiring the power nine in my deck. Really don't want them to leave. Really don't want them to leave. Really don't want them to. Mm. Oh, my God, it's there. Oh, my God, it's right there. Oh, the the bet the elite best of the best is right there. It's right freaking there. Oh, just oh come on, don't don't scoop. It's a Teferi plus away. I'm gonna let them go ahead. Hit the Teferi. That's fine. That's totally fine. Cast the burn down the house. I don't care. Yes, resolves. I don't want them to scoop. Definitely resolves. Ooh. I target myself. It was almost all lands, but then the Sublime Epiphany saved it. <laughs> we did it! We have cast Ancestral Recall on MTG Arena today. What have you done with your Thursday? It's probably not as cool as mine. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Our opponent looks at their five lands. They look at their arcane signet. They look at this beautiful magic card and that is the end. I mean, if I draw three for one mana at instant speed, that that is probably lethal. Angrath the Flame Chain, Rakdos. Uh, Molda, no, those are just sleeves that are hiding. I thought they molded to five. We'll keep. Bloodfast. Can draw a lot of cards, but I, as, as a person who loves that card, it is definitely from a bygone era now. Do you hit land with it? Okay. Still no black. I will show you ramp. I will show you how to land. Honk, honk. I, I mean, it's just mono black. They're playing mono black hangrath. Hangrath. Mono, mono black hangrath. He's very hangry. It's a very grumpy minotaur. Let's put Shauna out there and see what happens. Card drawing continues. It's 
sacrifice catalyst elemental add to red. Sure. I think I even knew this card was in the game. Uh. Okay. I mean, I guess it could attack here, so we should take her down before the treasure comes out. Swing, swing, Shauna, purifying blade. Go get them. They can block sack for two red and then we don't get the uh, lifelink, but they burn their card. It's probably not worth it. Gotta keep ramping though. Can't give up the ramp. Oh, oh, that's, oh man, drawn. Ooh, ooh guys, we're drawing three cards. We did it. Oh, it just feels so good. Is there anything better than just whoosh, 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 three cards? Anything? Angrath. Guys, if we counter this, they're going to leave. What are they going to do? They're going to steal Shauna, hit us with Shauna, sacrifice Shauna, draw a card on end step, maybe three. Hmm, I think it's like this. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Let's share the love, you know? We gotta share the love a little bit. We draw cards, they draw cards, everybody's happy. Right? That's how this works? Yeah, okay. Wait, no, you're supposed to draw... No, an opponent is supposed to draw with the Shauna. Why, why are you casting a Skittering Surveyor when you could be drawing three? They don't know the joy of drawing three. They don't understand. You only got one. How are you supposed to understand the beauty of the card if you only get one card from it? Terrible. A disaster, you might say. I've weathered tougher storms than you. Leaving Shauna in the graveyard to get back with Elspeth Conquer's death later. One of the reasons we just kind of let her get taken instead of swordsing her before she got taken. When we get her back with the ECD, we can sack a food and draw three the turn she comes back for the low price of five mana. Ah, <laughs> uh, congratulations. You're the proud owner of a new bird. I know it's probably not what you had in mind. <laughs> oh man, but it must be done. Monkey? Monkey pirate? Goblin pirate. Sure looks like a monkey. Striking resemblance to Ragavan. It's a good target for swords. You don't have a way to sacrifice it. All right, don't swords it yet. We're going to wait until ECD goes off in case they have a way to kill it in response. And it lets us make a food here. And we'll play the key first. Hmm. I mean, in theory, they could do something to Elspeth Conquer's death. And if they do something to Elspeth Conquer's death, we don't get back Shauna. So we should take regrowth. It can also get back the Elspeth Conquer's death itself, which is pretty good. Now we swords you. A ring of replication, halfway to becoming a ring of magnified replication. TikTok. Most of the time, eight turns don't happen, but against me, it can be done. Let's just say I've got time. All right, 
Nine mana, Angrath. No. You're gonna need 11 mana to play that. <laughs> oh, wait. It goes back to nine because of the ECD. That's why it was so much. Ooh. Hello. That's a plus one, plus one. That's three life. Let's go to our end step, shall we? I feel I feel a little draw three coming on. Oh yeah. Just like this. Mmm. <laughs> so good. Oh, it's so good. Draw, sure. Okay, and again. Their Bloodfast is keeping them in it. They're getting lots of fresh cards. Just keep digging. Now they do know the joy of a draw three, but usually if you have to lose six life to do it, it's not as good. Uh, sure. Patience, patience, patience. All right, guys. Replicating ring or Argyle's blood fast. I think they're going to block and sack this firebrand. But let's see. Oh, food. Food is so good. Let's get back the ECD now. So we don't have to worry about the ring in the near future. Pass to end step. Take our draw three. Beautiful. Um, they probably have a one drop creature. Is this better or worse than Boseju? I guess with Boseju, we can just do both though. All right, let's go for it. Let's give them a one drop creature. Target player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. Rude, but Goose, you've done your job. They get a cult conscript. I'll take that. That's a that's a fine deal. We're trying to avoid discarding the hand size. That's why we do all this in our own end step. Despair. Nope. We've countered a lot of Invoke Despair today, and I am enjoying keeping this trend going. Let's... Let's continue this. What? <sighs> Clever girl. I mean, maybe they watched my Invoke video. I don't know. That's okay. I know how to make them squirm. What if your commander didn't work? What if you lived in a world without your precious commander that you built your whole deck around, huh? What about that? I guess they're going to smork me down. Holy crap. Now they have Haven. They have a haste creature. They've got duress. Okay. Okay, opponent. All 
They're not attacking with the Haven. I'm making weird plays because I, if I stay alive, I don't think I can lose, but I do have to stay alive because that double invoke into duress and a haste creature is not at all what I expected. a lot of land get this ticking okay even Wait. Did they unscuff Haven? What? When did this happen? Unnerfed Haven? Did they unnerf multiple cards for Historic? I'll have to look this up. I will have to look this up. Research that totally isn't Twitch chat says uh, they also unnerfed Chariot and Ass Pirate and Goldspan. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. I really wanted them to do that for Historic Brawl, but, you know, for Historic, but definitely for Historic Brawl. Uh, yeah, that resolves. Doesn't do anything. Opponent not attacking with their unscuffed Haven because they remembered Hall of the Storm Giants. Ooh, this also does nothing. That's uh, a lot of land we got here, guys. A lot of land. That's okay. Mortal Sun will do its work eventually, I'm sure. I did not expect to be under this much pressure when I cast when I fetched and cast it, that's for sure. I did not expect the opponent's deck to have this much aggro. Uh, okay. I will attempt the Hall of Storm Giants. Let's see if they have the removal for it. They didn't attack with a conscript. Kind of weird. Surely you had a plan. Opponent, the plan. You are going to goat nap it. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap it, it gains haste. If it is a goat, plus three, plus oh. Yeah, of course. Why why wouldn't you run that card? They didn't pay the ward. <laughs> we learned so much this game. And we are back for the post-game wrap on Shauna. The Purifying Blade, playing the control version, then kind of forcing in the Power 9 card from the newest Alchemy update, but it definitely paid off as we got a few Power 9, I, we'll call them social media moments in this particular video. My record with the deck on PC that the stats track is 10 and 2, 83% win rate, very, very good. I, it's gotta be said, I've played a lot more of this deck than the stats show. I've played multiple different versions. I'm 11 and two with the combo version. I'm four and oh with another version that I was trying out. And I have countless games that I've played on the iPad and all of it uh, kind of plays out the same way. Like Shauna can be very, very good. It is pretty hard to play, but it is a very rewarding deck to play. And I really, for the most part, as much as I love my Paradox Engine combos and my Life Link combos and the Life Gain combos with Scurry Oak, I really like this version. I like just trying to play the game to a spot where eventually, eventually, I'm going to control your stuff. I'm going to keep you under control. And then I'm going to hit you once with Shauna. I'm going to get a little draw three and I'm going to start to pull ahead. And from there, it just gets 
worse and worse and it kind of piles up and i really like that about this deck so if you're looking for a build that tickles that specific itch i think this is a very good one how competitive is shauna in historic brawl i can't imagine running this deck against the likes of kinnon you know or against uh like uh teferi who slows the sunset like some of those blue decks are just going to be much much better you playing your creature and then keeping it around for a turn and then attacking with it to get ahead it's very tough it can take some wins there but i think this is firmly a high b low a tier deck i will say this if you for whatever reason can't beat joda it does farm joda <laughs> And I've been enjoy I have been enjoying Joda farming ever since the new cards from Dominaria came out. All right, that's gonna do it for this particular C C H B competitive historic brawl video. I hope that you're enjoying the series, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for staying to the end. You're cool. Mm -hmm.